It's my distinct privilege to welcome Vani Kola. She is the Managing Director of Indo-US Ventures, a $200 million venture fund based out of Bangalore, India. Vani, it's a pleasure to welcome you. I'm glad to be here. You, know, you have been here more than two years now. A uh, lot of synergy, a lot of excitement in the Indian entrepreneurship ecosystem. I uh, wanted your take on how you see the passion and the energy coming together to create more entrepreneurs in India. Yeah, I have actually been here now five years and uh, what has changed dramatically over that period is the coming of age, if you will, of people willing to take risks to start up companies in all kinds of areas, you know, not just technology, but the level of innovation and in India you can't associate innovation as you do in the valley with just technology, it is innovation of business models, it's innovation of markets that I'm seeing tremendously. We probably see uh, three to four hundred uh, companies or entrepreneurs in a year. Lots of great ideas and uh, uh, only now I think actually we are seeing some companies uh, also demonstrate tremendous scale and that is what has changed over the last few years. Where do you see the excitement coming from? One could be you know, people like yourself who have been achievers before and people want to emulate you know, your successes. Or is it purely driven because there's money or the hope for money? Uh, what do you think are the drivers for this? Well, I think first of all, it is driven by opportunity and money is a byproduct of that and is an essential byproduct of that because that's what is a uh, uh, prime mover of motivation at some level. But I think f fundamentally there are many markets or opportunities in India that have opened up. Uh, for example, this afternoon I have a panel where someone has started a, uh, a, a car rental company but with strong, strong technology uh, background and uh, it's something that you can't do in mature markets. So in developing markets, we have invested in a pharmacy chain, for example. So everything is going towards organized, everything is going towards better customer service and better consumer products. And with the GDP at 8 plus percent and consumer growth uh, uh, just uh, and consumer aspirations uh, at an unprecedented level here, I think there are many, many areas that are opening up health care, education. We recently saw a preschool company which has grown in two years to uh, more than 200 centers. So the kind of growth that is possible today for an entrepreneur who wants to take risks in almost any area, healthcare, education, infrastructure, internet, so on and so forth, I think that's what is fueling the entrepreneurial dreams. You are also mentioning earlier that there are corporate executives who are not looking to become entrepreneurs. Correct. How do you see that dynamic playing out? Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, for a long, long time, I'm sure my uh, generation, uh, there was no notion of being an entrepreneur if uh, you did well, and well was defined by corporate success, right? The brands you were associated with, and the role, and the company car, and the company house, those were all the monikers of success. And that has changed dramatically. So somebody could be a senior corporate executive, and they're seeing young companies uh, in four years achieve tremendous scale, and those entrepreneurs take home big chunks of money, and then there is uh, 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 questioning of, uh, you know, can I not do that, right? So we are seeing more and more corporate executives uh, take the plunge for the first time, leave their comfortable and uh, 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 distinctive jobs to be able to say, I want to start something. And we are, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, I jokingly call it the midlife crisis or mid-career crisis. Uh, you have worked for 15 years, you are at some senior management uh, position and uh, you say, I can be an entrepreneur, I want to be an entrepreneur. I see that happening here a lot. There are funds like yours who have come here to invest with uh, particularly the early stage companies. Correct. But on the other side, there are also complaints from aspiring entrepreneurs that the funds are not investing where they said they would invest. Yeah. They're looking for a mature company because I understand from the other perspective, you need the returns as well. Correct. Um, uh, you know, how do you handle this kind of complaint coming from aspiring entrepreneurs? I think we should look at the other side of the story first before we um, talk about that. What is really happening is in India, it's possible to invest in more mature companies and still make attractive returns. So if you invest in more early stage companies, you want even better returns, right? And 
Indian entrepreneurial mindset is still very much about control and uh, uh, significant ownership. And the problem is if you take venture money at an early stage, you have to give up ownership um, and you have to take dilution to support growth. But that transition has really not happened in the entrepreneur's mind. So they want to grow exciting companies and have wonderful ideas, but equally important for them is having uh, control of their company, having ownership of their company. And hence, I think the access to capital uh, has been a challenge, right? So if one needs venture money, then uh, the byproduct of that is you suffer dilution significantly pretty early. And I think that equation hasn't really yet settled down. It's not the access to capital. Capital is available for good ideas. Not for every idea, but for good ideas. Capital is absolutely available. Sometimes what can be limiting is the uh, balance of uh, growth versus control. My last question too is about inspiration and women. Yeah. I know you don't believe in uh, the gender bias, yeah. but there still exists as, you know, big gender bias, I feel, yeah. especially in a country like India. Yeah. But I see a lot of young women coming out from colleges and aspiring to be entrepreneurs. Uh, you are a good example uh, you know, to follow for your daughter, for my daughter. Yeah. They look up to you. When they come to you, what advice do you give them? Do, do you see them as still facing the challenge of so-called glass ceiling at all? Or in, in this culture where you know, men pretty much dominate every field? Are there more challenges? How do you advise them to come out of that? You know, I, of course, it's not so much a glass ceiling as a cultural uh, context uh, that uh, I think is sometimes limiting for women to be able to balance family and work. And we are still a culture where uh, work is not at the expense of family. Yeah, and it's perhaps the right social choice to make. And so I think that. Um, that's probably the biggest struggle for women to pursue uh, entrepreneurialism and so forth aggressively. But you know, it's very heartening. I see number of uh, uh, spouses together starting companies and um, uh, that's uh, fantastic. I've also seen number of uh, uh, women just out of college, which is where they probably have most flexibility in terms of their life balance, uh, starting companies. And uh, so, you know, I'm very, very hopeful uh, that when the right role models are established for that, uh, in terms of women in India succeeding, young women in India succeeding, and being at the helm of their companies, um, then more and more will uh, follow suit. I think the gender bias is only uh, exists uh, until you uh, are willing to erase that by crossing over the hurdle. The hurdles are real, but the first few that cross over the hurdles change the status quo. There's one important question I just thought of, which is <clears throat> the funding of startups and the exits. In Silicon Valley, we have a different model because we look for exits. You have had a fairly successful track record of investing in companies. How do you see yourself mentoring them and helping them take to the exit stage? How different is it from Silicon Valley? Yeah, you know, I think um, it goes back to the question around uh, leadership. And uh, as the company grows, evolution or evolving uh, leadership is again something we need to get comfortable with. And that can further and further maximize the value of the companies. But exit in India, I think, you know, Indian IPO market is very, very vibrant. And it's a uh, absolutely a uh, valid uh, exit path. And uh, so is m &As. But I think, again, it goes back to the question of control. I think if one says I want to build shareholder value versus I want to manage my uh, ownership and control, then I think exits in India are actually looking very, very attractive. Mani, it's a pleasure. Like always, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Martin. Take care. Bye-bye.